Europe versus Asia. Horizons to embrace, pitfalls to avoid. As the European and Asian markets face off in a head-to-head -head frontal assault, what should affiliates and operators look out for? Simon Eaton. Simon, I hope you can all hear me okay. Um, I've been in the affiliate industry and I game in the industry for about 20 years. And I'll tell you a little bit about myself. I, I got involved um, in QSO in the North American market and it was a real boomer market at the time and it still is but I've since moved into the Asian market because I believe that's where the future lies. Uh, I'll just, sorry, sorry about that, I just got myself lost. These are some of the brands I've worked for, Bet365, BetOnline, VIP.com, Nine.com, and quite recently I worked uh, for WeBet. And right now I'm consulting for a few brands who are moving from the west to the east. Uh, there's a lot of pitfalls, so I'm helping them out and I'm making sure that they don't lose too much money and they start making a profit fairly quickly. Um, I live in the Philippines, so I'm very close uh, to all the different Asian countries. And I'm very close to working with PACCOR, uh, which is an operate, which is a regulator based in the Philippines, where most of the um, Asian gaming companies work. They work, they operate in the Philippines or Cambodia. Okay, now you're gonna ask me, why look at Asia? Why don't we just stick with Europe? Why don't we just stick with Canada? Why don't we just stick with the markets we've got? Um, firstly, Asia's got a massive population. It's four billion people and it's growing. The number of people in that population that have mobile devices, having access to the internet is doubling nearly every year. Uh, even uh, the, the, the poorest of the ones there have got access to simple uh, mobile internet. Yes, they're mainly mobile phone uh, users rather than um, using a desktop or tablet but you, there's lots of ways you can still cater for them. Uh, as you all know, the Asians have a culture of gambling. They gamble on everything. They gamble uh, from the very smallest things. You see them, the chickens fighting in the farm uh, on, a, on the weekends uh, to them sitting at the back of tables. Uh, I still believe uh, there's a massive space for the good operators and solid operators to enter Asia. There's a lot of operators in Asia, and a lot of operators are doing it wrong. A lot of them just enter, and firstly, they're trying to scam. They're just trying to copy other brands, and they're, they're not paying the players on time. They haven't got a clue about um, domain blocking. They're, they don't understand about um, like dealing with China. They don't understand about dealing with uh, Thailand, Vietnam, Malaysia, etc. And in Southeast Asia, as you can see, these are the main countries that I look at, um, where I believe the opportunities are. And right on the far side, you can see India. India is uh, not as profitable, as you can tell, as China, but it's definitely got a massive market, and India's got probably the most billionaires outside of China in Asia, so it's worth looking at, because there is a lot of money still there. Uh, what, what do the Asians like to gamble on? Uh, that, that's what a lot of people ask me. You'd be quite surprised, a lot of them love to gamble on uh, European sports. They love to gamble on the Premier League. They love to gamble on UEFA. That's why you see a lot of the Asian brands, Fun88 or the other brands, taking shirt sponsorships. Because they take the shirt sponsorships and they do the Chinese writing, because when it's on TV, they get it into the, into the Chinese uh, gamblers or they get into the Thai gamblers. They love to bet on soccer. That's great for European operators because they know how to set the odds. They know more about the soccer. They know more, when I say soccer, I'm sorry, I'm coming from the North America side, let's call it football. They know more about that than um, the European side know more about it than the Asian operators. And the Asian operators are constantly going out to recruit uh, Europeans to help them set the odds, to help them uh, manage the sportsbook side of things. And then on the other side, you've got to look at on the casino side, what do they like to uh, play on? You'd be surprised that blackjack's a very, very small, um, small bet for them. They don't really get, uh, do blackjack. They want instant results. Um, so baccarat, you, it's a very, very simple game, but you get instant wins. Uh, Fish Hunter um, was very popular a couple of years ago. It's like an instant result, and you see the numbers go up, and you win that number. Okay, so quickly moving on to the next slide here. 
I've explained why European operators will succeed there. So, and I don't know what happened to this chart here, but it was a little bit wider. Um, what is the player reach um, by population? I'm just going to tell you there's a couple of countries missing off this slide. So I'll, I'll quickly explain uh, from the top. There's like two or three countries missing. The first country you, you've got to look, look at is, is China. And China's got a population of 1.4 billion. How many of those are gamblers? Well, you've got to remove half of that, that population because they're not able to gamble. They're children or they're, they're very old. Um, so you've got to say there's 700 million ability in China. Very close to India. India is 1.24 billion. And I believe in the next five, 10 years, probably India is going to surpass China in population. And then, and then you're looking at Japan, which has got a very uh, large population. And then, then we're looking at the Philippines. I'm sorry about the slide. It is missing a lot of the information. I don't know why, because of my laptop it shows. Um, and then we're going down to like the Philippines. Once again, they do gamble in the Philippines, but a lot of operators don't cater for the Philippines because they're regulated there. So you don't cater in a country that you're regulated in because you don't want problems with the local government. And then you're, but maybe from Cambodia, you can target the Philippines. And then you've got to look at Vietnam. Um, Vietnam's quite a profitable uh, market to go after if you're doing it correctly because they love football betting. And then you're looking at uh, going down South Korea, Malaysia, Taiwan, Japan, and Hong Kong. Most operators avoid uh, Taiwan and avoid Hong Kong for legal reasons uh, because they work with a lot, of op a lot of operators based there or a lot of providers are based there. Okay, player value. Um, I'm going to be honest that once again, there, there, is a, there are a few slides missing off this. Um, so don't take this. The, the first thing you want to look at is, is Japan. In Japan, the player value is pretty good. Um, the, it, you've got to have a solid software. If you haven't got a solid software, a solid platform, solid customer support, you'll fail because the Japanese are very German in the mentality that it's got to be perfect in everything they do. And then you go down in Taiwan, I found an experience, if you can cater for that market, they're pretty good, followed by Hong Kong. And then China's less so. The reason China would say is less so um, than the other two markets is because you get a lot of um, bonus guys coming in. You get a lot of guys who just sign up to get a $20 bonus, $20 bonus, and, you see, and it sends your FTDs to the moon. You're, you're really excited about it. But when you look at your numbers, it brings the popularity, overall popularity of the players down. But on the other side, in China, you do see those $10,000 a month regular depositors, $20,000 US a month regular depositors coming through, or even more. So you get a, VIPs are amazing in China if you cater for them. When you deal with the Asian markets with China, the money comes in, you've got to be able to pay it out straight away within minutes or 15 minutes, you've got to get the money back to them. So I'm hurrying up here. Um, what are the key challenges? Well, regulations are discussed in IT infrastructure, banking, and localization, other things you've got to look at. Um, in the regulation, you're looking at Cambodia or the Philippines. And then acquiring an operating license, you've got to go, go in there and go after the operating license. It's best to work as a third party. Use someone else's license. Affiliates don't need a license. Um, IT infrastructure, the main blocking is a big issue over there. And obviously, affiliate tracking, so you've got to be always stay on top of that, having a great IT infrastructure in place and work on the cloud. Um, and then you've got to look at uh, the banking and payment solutions. Majority of banks is a uh, local bank transfer. Then after you're dealing with local bank transfer, then you deal with mobile uh, banking. So mobile solutions, we pay, uh, et cetera. Credit cards are less commonly used there. Crypto is slowly entering, and I believe in a couple of years, crypto is going to probably count for 30% or more of the transactions, and I hope it goes that way, because I'm a strong believer in crypto. Okay, localization. Remember to localize your website, translator, etc. Make sure it's, it's done correctly um, when you do it. Don't just use Google Translate. So that's another challenge. I'm quickly going through this, because I see I've only got two seconds left. Uh, and to conclude, I'm just give me two seconds here. Affiliate and operating opportunities do exist, but if you go into Asia, look at a, a smaller country to, or region to start with. Don't go straight to China because unless you want to burn all your money, go for the smaller country. Asia counts for 60% of the world population, 
So don't miss out. Give it a go. But don't hit China to start with. Look at Thailand, look at Vietnam, look at Malaysia, etc. first. Okay, thank you. My name is Simon Eden. If you'd like to contact me, here are my contact details.